Hey there, this is Future Me here to introduce a video I shot uh, primarily about six months ago uh, on this uh, late 50s, early 60s MGA, and this video will be to show you how to use a aftermarket wire harness. Uh, most of them are all the same, where they are all labeled, uh, break and turn, all, all the wires are uh, are labeled, you know, even the ignition starter, charging, uh, all of that. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into how to do this. This is a work in progress, uh, so nothing's getting fixed into place and hard strapped down uh, as things kind of come in and out as the project. Uh, is is going on so uh, the owner will mount all of this stuff where he sees fit after he gets all the other stuff uh, in place uh, again I'm not sure what brand harness this is um, he just kind of gave it to me and said here you go and uh, I generally I like to, to use the interstate brand uh, aftermarket wiring harnesses. Difference is at the fuse box, you it's kind of like in a house. You actually have to screw the wires in on the fuse box. Uh, and and what's nice about that, especially if you get on a real complicated car and you've got a lot of circuits and you know got power windows and electric fans and all your stereo radio power antenna just air conditioning just a ton of circuits and you routed them one way and then it turns out they're going to be under or over or around or in, in something they're in the way of something or something's in the way of them you can undo them at the uh, fuse box uh and just reroute it uh on this end if there's a problem you know up with routing up up under the dash and and such where with these um you know you got two choices you can undo the entire run uh from the other end and work it back and then work it back again you know or the quick and easy way is you cut, you just cut the wire uh reroute it how you need to and then splice it but then you're adding more connections and splices and potential problems and points for corrosion down the line so that's why um, i personally recommend the uh, interstate uh aftermarket harnesses and again they will follow the same gm color coding and now since this is european and it uses a separate brake and turn signal it actually makes the wiring very simple and you can kind of kind of cheat here so this is my right right rear uh turn in the green and this is my right front turn in the dark blue and then this is yellow is left rear turn and um the light blue is the front left turn. So I can just run these uh, together and I'm not having to mess with the turn signal switch that interrupts them, uh, interrupts a brake light. I'm just using, uh, it's turned loose since I haven't been down here in a few months. He's kind of backburnered this project again. Uh, so this should be sitting that way and it very much resembles the original switch that was in there it just rotated and it was a single pole double throw so left turn right turn and you'll see all that work in a second i use that uh you know, there's the wiring going to that's the third brake light wiring that goes down to the brake switch the hydraulic pressure switch for when you press the brake pedal that is with the separate brake lights instead of using the turn signals for both turn and brake I was able to do that and it just it makes wiring so much easier and this is like couldn't be any simpler the um the original switch um 
<laughs> which is here, um, somebody had gotten into and monkeyed with, uh, but it had just this big paddle, <laughs> this left, left, right, uh, paddle. So it's just a, uh, single pole, double throw <laughs> switch in there. It does the same thing for left and right turn. And we have, you know, it's off in the middle. Tricky thing with this is, uh, MGA's, MG's British, anything Lucas Electric, the wiring harness generally ran down the left hand, uh, right hand side, right hand side of the car rather, and the um, American stuff uh, and all these aftermarket harnesses are primarily meant to run down the left hand side. So what? ends up happening is the length of the wires is kind of reversed. They're intended to come down the left. They'll be shorter for the left leads for headlights, turn signals, all of that. And then the right will be longer because generally they come to down the left and feed over to the right. Um, so uh, in order to keep things semi close to original and especially for feeds going to the engine ran them down the right side um, and then that means there's some doubling there's some doubling back and then some have to be lengthened um, so there's plenty to cut off the right and add to the the left uh, so that's what I'm doing now I would ideally like to have some grommets. We might be able to add some after the fact, because uh, not only ideally, they plain will need them. So I got a hole drill there. I'll drill one in there and run my left hand wiring out. I'll take these buckets out. I'm about to get these wiring through the holes and up to uh, um, some sockets did find uh, these, so yay, get to use some nice new headlight uh, connectors. So, um, time to get busy. All right, after a few hours work, got the wiring up front, straightened out, separated, and run neat. Um, have headlights working, um, just stuff just mocked up and dummied up. I've got a scratch and get good grounds um, got the parking lights next will be the turn signals it's gonna take some uh, deciphering uh, up there up under the dash some paint uh, got on some of the wires um, what did I want to show let me go grab the high beam switch here so we can see that work Highs and lows work. In just a few minutes, I managed to get a blinker working. So if I got one working, I can I can get them all. And now left front. For the taillight wiring, like I said earlier, all the kits I've used so far uh, follow the GM color code, or at least the color code that was popular through you know 60s 70s 80s no telling what they're doing now uh but anyhow that uh color code generally had your uh taillights and i am on the left rear taillight right here and to help me out uh as i wired you can see i put as I figured out which filament was which in the bulb that went to which connector, you might be able to see it down there. Yeah, a little bit where it says tail right in there. Just, you know, if you just label one thing, you don't have to, uh, you know, worry about the other one. You know which, you know which one it is. So, uh, and kept, and these are the same housing left to right. So kept it the same way over there on the uh, right rear. So I've got um, the brown, which is the tails, coming into the uh, connector, which goes to the prong and the filament for the taillights. So that's brown. 
that's on left rear and so over here on right rear and it's the same then yellow is left rear blinker turn signal and then they have on the now this connector uses a uh, uses a separate uh, ground as you can see and these are let's see if I can pull one out here easily how I did now this again this wiring kit you could use on the, anything and this if you're wiring a hot rod whatever or just rewiring something old uh, I want to replace all the old old wiring with a new fuse box with blade fuses. Um, you know, uh, this is the more than likely the uh, color scheme you're going to see with the rear, with the uh, brown as tails, yellow as um, left rear turn, and then a dark green as the right rear turn uh but on this mg what i did because i use these um whatever you like kind of like these bullet terminal connectors almost like a ferrule um i pre pretend the ends of the wire bent them over so it would really fit tight in that terminal and then heated it up with this solder and iron uh, i actually used a high wattage gun right down here at the base and then just flowed the solder in through the top so that it would be uh, a good solder connection in there and then ran a separate one for the ground uh same thing over here just i've got you know, I had to kind of use whatever wire he had laying around. So I've got black for ground over here on the uh, right rear. And the green is the right rear uh, turn. Now, since this car, and it makes it kind of easy on this car, and all the Europeans and foreigns use a separate brake light. And that makes wiring this stuff real easy because you can wire your turn signals straight where otherwise uh up on your column you're having a cancel cam with um you're actually inter on a double filament 1157 bulb uh traditionally on american car your brake light is your blinker light so when you um turn on your blinker you're actually uh going to the turn signal or vice versa um, you're using that same film, but anyhow, you got to run your brake light wiring up through the column, and, and then it actually feeds out to your uh, uh, to your green and uh, green and yellow for the rear, and then it gets tricky because at the front you don't want to hit your brakes and turn on your front uh, turn signal lights uh, so that's some tricky different wiring um, so because this uses a separate brake light uh, again I could run my uh, power in and out of my flasher uh, power into the flasher and then uh, the uh, through the switch and this one just uses a simple uh, it just uses a a dash, yeah, it uses a uh, single pole double throw switch up on the dash. Uh, the brakes, what I did is, and I've done a number of his MGs, and this is where he had the Europeans and the foreigns and such. The orange is actually the third brake light line, so that goes up to my brake light switch and then comes back uh, here. Uh, and then again, I had to use whatever wire he had available. So, um, we come in on the third brake light switch and go to the left rear. And then I come across and go over to the right rear. And then you can see my grounds over there. And I'll remind him to paint, paint that over, um, so that doesn't rust and rust and corrode. 
so it ran you know ran separate grounds because the uh just couldn't rely really on the uh body grounds uh back here making contact through all the paint and every everything else uh going on back here so that takes care of our wiring for uh the rear so the front turn and parking on the MG, uh, again, I could, because we're running a separate uh, brake light, uh, I was able to just tie my front and rear uh, signal lines together. So again, the GM color code, I believe, uh, when he painted this, uh, primed it, he got a good bit of paint on everything. But um, this should be a dark blue, should be our left um, turn. And then this uh, is, in theory, under all of this is brown. Uh, so that, again, is going to be same thing front to back. These are going to be your um, parking, parking lights. And the, um, you know, the headlight stuff is... Uh, I think I went over that a little earlier. It's it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, they're labeled left and left and right, high beam, low beam, and then there's a ground. It's a three prong, uh, single bulb, uh, each side, and then this side. I don't know if I can get up underneath here. Of course, the spiders have moved back in, um, but yeah, this side should be a light blue. Um, and then a brown going down to our, uh, parking and turn signal up front. All of this will get tied up and wrapped, put up in the, uh, that slit corrugated, um, flexible conduit and tied up, uh, out of the way. All right, sports fans, here we go. Going to be the big tail and brake and turn light test. So, turn on the key. And we should have brakes. Should have brake lights. We should have a left turn, a right turn with our brakes. And we're going to turn on our tail. So we got brakes and a right turn in tails and brakes and a left turn in tail and the headlights and a left turn and then I'm gonna go over here and we're gonna hit a right turn. And promise not to make fun of the wires across the headlights holding them in. That's just temporary. The owner of the car, he's going to do something with all of the bezels and all of that. Well, hope you enjoyed the MGA wiring video. If you did, take your comment smashing brake pedal foot and push hard on that like button and take your turn <laughs> signals and turn on some comments and subscribe and there will be more to come. Thanks for watching.